Welcome to iLecture Online. Here's another very interesting view request video. It has to do with a cylinder 10 centimeters tall and it's filled with a combination of mercury and water. And they want us to find the pressure at the bottom. And the constraint is that the amount of mass of water equals the amount of mass of mercury. Now, since mercury is a lot more dense, you would need a lot less volume of mercury compared to the water. The total height of the cylinder is 10 centimeters, so one of the things we're going to have to do is figure out what will be the height of the mercury, or the depth of the mercury, and the depth of the water proportionally. So, how do we do that? How do we figure out the pressure? Well, first of all, we have to understand that the pressure inside the liquid, in general, can be found by using the equation rho g h, h being the depth of the liquid, g the acceleration due to gravity, and the rho is the density of the liquid. But if there's two densities, we can say that the pressure total will be equal to the pressure of the water plus the pressure caused by the mercury. So we simply add the two together. And of course, what that means is that the total pressure will be equal to the rho g h of the water and notice this h of the water is this high right there plus the rho g h of the mercury and of course this is the density of the water and this is the density of the mercury now we know the density of water is a thousand kilograms per cubic meter or one gram per cubic centimeter and the density for mercury for those who don't know that is 13.6 grams per cubic centimeter or 13,600 kilograms per cubic meter. So, how do we solve this? Well, the key is that they tell us that the mass of the mercury equals the mass of the water. Now we have to relate the mass to the volume and the density. So, what we can say here is that the, the density is equal to the mass divided by the volume, which then implies that the mass is equal to density times the volume. Now, if this is the cross-sectional area, and then this is the height, then we can relate the height and the cross-sectional area to the volume, and so we can replace these two m's by what they're equal to. So we can say that the density of the mercury times the volume of the mercury must equal the density of the water times the volume of the water. And again, the volume of a cylinder will be the area of the base times the height. So in this case, that would be the density of the mercury. The volume would then be the area of the base, area times the height. In this case, the height of the mercury equals, and here we have the density of the water times the cross-section area times the height of the water. And notice that in both cases, the area can cancel out because we have the same area on both sides. And now, notice that we know the densities of water and mercury, so we can find the ratio of the height of one and the other. So, let's do that. We can say that the height of the mercury is equal to the height of the water times the ratio of the density of the water divided by the density of mercury. And the ratio of that, height of the mercury, is equal to the height of the water times the ratio of 1 gram per cubic centimeter divided by 13.6 grams per, cu per cubic centimeter. So that's the ratio of the height of the mercury relative to the height of the water. Now, to find them, we realize that the two together add up to 10 centimeters. So we know that the height of mercury plus the height of the water equals 13. Uh, not 13 but 10 centimeters and then we can replace the height of the mercury by what that's equal to so we can say that the height of the water H2O and I probably should have used small h so we don't get confused here, there we go so the height of the water times 1 over 13.6 plus the height of the water is equal to 10 centimeters so now when we add these two together this is 13.6 over 13.6 plus 1, so we get 14.6 over 13.6 times the height of the water equals 10 centimeters. So that means that the height of the water, H2O, is equal to 10 times 
13.6 divided by 14.6 equals, there we go, 9.315 centimeters. So that's the height of the water. And now by using this, we can say that this is equal to 9.315 centimeters times the ratio of 1 over 13.6. Of course, we can also subtract that from 10, and then the remainder would be 0. Point, that would be uh, 6 eight five centimeters and so that would be the height of the mercury so we add this to this that would be 10 centimeters so we're good so we have the height of the water we have the height of the mercury now we can find the total pressure now that we know everything so let's go over here and find the total pressure pressure total is equal to now because I'm only doing that <laughs> The density of the water. Let's see. We can do it in grams. Now nah, we'll do kilograms. That's better. Density would be 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. G, 9.8 meters per second square. Height of the water in meters, because now we want to convert that to meters, is equal to 0 0.09315 meters. That should be a 5 there. There we go. And then plus the density of mercury, 13,600 kilograms per cubic meter. 9.8 meters per second squared. And the height, 0 0.0685 meters. Okay, now if we add those together, and you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve both of them together, uh, I'm going to write each solution separately because it's an interesting result because I worked it out in advance. So P total is equal to. So we have 9,800 times 0.09315 equals. So we have rounded off 913 newtons for the pressure, oh, newtons per square meter, of course because it's Pascal's. So that would be the pressure caused by the water plus, and the second one, that would be 13,600 times 9.8 times 0.0. Am I missing a zero? Aha, I'm missing a zero. I need one more zero in there. There we go. One more zero. Zero, zero, six, eight, five. Equals, and notice we get again 913 newtons per square meter and the together that would be 1826 newtons per square meter for pressure total but what is really interesting here is to note that the pressure applied by the water is equal to the pressure applied by the mercury of course the relative height depends upon their relative density so the total weight, since the mass of each is the same, the total weight of each is the same, and therefore the pressure applied by each is the same. And that's an interesting result. And this is the answer. That's how it's done. You like? Classic problem. Classic problem, it is. It certainly is. But uh, it was an interesting problem, well worth doing. Correct. So the pressure at this location right here is 913 newtons per square meter. And then if we ignore that, the pressure by this amount of mercury is also 913 newtons per square meter combined. You simply double it. Yep, that's an interesting problem.